Welcome to the Parasite Podcast, a show about me and you. We are Venom. Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to another Parasite Podcast, which has been like a year or two since I've made one of these episodes. But like a you know typical introvert, I just haven't went out and made too many friends. But I did remember that I had friends that I've known for years, some of which I've never met in person, like Paige here. And I reached out to her and was like, hey, would you like to, you know, you're a content creator now. I'd love to have you on. I think you're a really cool person. Well, you know, would you have the time? And she was very nice to make time for us today. So everyone say hello to Paige and Paige say hello to the Parasites. Hello. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Um, and yes, uh, you know, we're going to get into talking about video games today. I, I am, I ask all my guests about Venom at some point. So I may sprinkle in like to get your thoughts on, you know, something like a Venom character. Um, okay. But we'll get it. We'll get into that later. Uh, first, I want people to get to know you. And then there's stuff I'd like to know about you too. So how did we kind of bump into each other? Like I, as for my recollection was Harmontown, the Dan Harmon podcast. Right. So you appeared on Harmontown. I was very into podcasts at the time. Um, I still listen though, not with the same probably vigor that I did at the time. Um, but I, I guess I probably found your Instagram account. So you were you know, posting regularly. And I think I just reached out and I was like, hey, you know, I heard you on this thing. I think you're cool. Thank you for sharing your story, et cetera. Um, and you reached back. So I think we just, um, you know, said hi occasionally. And uh, and I think that was that. So yeah, pretty much. I, I, I tend to, and most people will tell you this, and some of even my people who might be watching this will tell you, I'm I am kind of like I can uh, exude an extrovert personality, um, but I I'm naturally introverted. So there there's a lot of times where people reach out to me and I never respond back. And it's not based on like, you know, what they look like or, or you know, what like I might go look at their page and just be like, oh, you know, they don't post much. Like it, it's like a varying degree of reasons why I don't. Uh, sometimes it's because I when I put myself out there like on Harmontown, the reaction to it was kind of mixed at times and I, with anxiety and other things I go through, I don't really like that. <laughs> so, yeah, but I'm, 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 yeah. Do you under relate to that? Uh, yeah. I mean, I'm, I tend to keep to myself, not that I don't enjoy interacting with people, but like you said, I think it's an introversion thing. I, I, it is an expenditure of energy to, uh, associate with people and, Usually I like to reserve that energy more than I like to talk to others. So, yeah, I, I get that. And well, so that's even double. Thank you for, for being here today. And uh, with, with people like you that I've met and kind of conversed with, it's easier for me to put on like the, uh, the podcast personality because I'm like, right. Oh, I'm genuinely interested in, in talking to, you know, Paige or, or uh, to Jaya who I've had on before and Mike and other people that I've had on the show. It's like, I'm like, man, we've known each other like Tajai and I think I know each other for like seven or eight years or something like that on online and never once met, even though we were both on the West Coast. And then I moved here and met a guy named Anthony and we've known each other for years ever since I was in California. And we still only met one time here since I've been here in Florida. So um, so I, I get that. And, uh, and again, like I, I appreciate you sharing some of that awesome energy of yours with us today. Uh, so let's let's get into. Um, Harmontown's a great topic because it's not something I bring up on the channel a lot. Um, I've, like I said, I really love Dan. Uh, I, I, at one point, I think I kind of was like, Hey man, I'm appreciate all you've done for me. Um, but I think I'm going to kind of step away for a while. And he was really cool about it. He was like, yeah, I, I get it. I totally get it. Um, but, uh, he tried for a long time. I used to go to Harmontown before it was even podcasted. Um, a, oh, a friend, really? yeah, a friend of mine was like, she brought me to like my first episode there and they weren't even recording it at that point. And, uh, and then I met Dan and then he heard my story and then was like, dude, you got to come on the show. And for there, I think there's like a, the fourth episode of Harmontown or something like really early on, you'll hear him say, dude, I have a friend in the audience with him who had aneurysms, you know, like he just like throws it out there. And I don't think I, yeah. And I don't think I actually appeared on the show till like, like, episode 80 or something like it was like way 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 later like he he kept asking me like you got to do it you got to do it and me being an introvert but just going because i like dan i was like I, I i can't do it but he he <laughs> whittled me down in time uh, with that dan uh, charm so yeah. what is it what is about harmontown that kind of pulled you to that show uh, i'd I love to hear that 
Oh gosh. Um, uh, well, okay. So I had been into, uh, whose line is it anyway? Great show. I, I want to say probably around the time of, you know, 13, 14 years old, okay. uh, was, you know, I, I just, I started watching it on YouTube and then it was all I would do is I would watch whose line is it anyway. Jeff was on Harmontown. Um, and I've never met Dan. I have met Jeff a couple times. I would say he probably wouldn't know me if he saw me, but um, I just adored him. And so I was like, oh, he's on this thing. I should probably start listening. The first podcast I had listened to was um, Greg Proops's podcast. And he had talked about Harmontown. And so I think Harmontown was the second podcast I got into. Okay. Um, Thanks, Greg and- Proops. Yeah, thanks, Greg Proops. Uh, I, what about it appealed to me? I don't know. I, it's so unusual. Um, I think I probably saw a little bit of myself in Dan, somebody who, you know, wanted to put himself out there and felt a lot of the times that when he put himself out there, he failed, but still kept doing it anyway. Um, That he had, you know, just a little bit of a difficult time interacting with the world around him, um, but kept doing it anyway. And I think I, I saw myself in that a little bit. That's cool. And I relate. I mean, that that's kind of my draw to Dan was, I think uh, he was sharing stories that were, deeply personal and easy, easily stories that if anyone heard them would like a, like a quote unquote normal person or regular person might go, what a weirdo. Like he's what, what do you mean? He slept next to mannequins and you know, like, but he was totally yeah. cool. He was totally cool about sharing that. And, and post aneurysm for me, like I kind of sought out people like Dan, there was some people in South Carolina I knew like that and Georgia and, and California. And I kind of naturally seeked out people who just said, like the truth in a way, you know, like just here's what I've done and, you know, judge me if you want, but this is the kind of person I am. And I, I just found that so, that draw so appealing. And then I also fell in love with Jeff too. So I, I get that, uh, you know, Greg pulled you to Jeff and Jeff, pull, you know, whose line pulled you. Um, I totally get that because uh, Jeff's an insanely talented and funny guy. What is it about, um, uh, like, I guess, uh, whose line is anyway in particular that really grabbed you in and then um, what made you still go like, well, I want to reach out to people that are on Harmontown. Like what brought that extrovert out in you a little bit? Oh, um, well, I don't know. I would say that that was probably a difficult time in my life. I, I I think it was around the time of my parents' divorce that I got really into this. So I just, I needed something joyful for me because I was having a lot of trouble finding joy. Mm -hmm. Um, and I just, I thought it was so delightful. Um, uh, uh, as for reaching out to other people, um, I, I guess it was just seeking community, like, right. uh, so to speak, you know, the Dan <laughs> talk, but um, just, I don't know. I, I think it was good to, you know, find friends where they were available um, and, you know, like you, not need to reach out to them very often. Just, you know, know that they were there for an occasional conversation about something you both loved. Yeah, I- uh, and one, I appreciate that too. Cause like, I, that's kind of the thing is we all, that's what uh, Harmontown I thought was, did really well was Dan created a place like an Island of misfit toys, almost like where it's like, Hey, you feel weird. Well, you can find a friend here, you know? Um, and unfortunately with that comes people who are hurting and who are vulnerable in some way. And then that brings in people sometimes in communities that want to take advantage of that kind of stuff. And, it's, it's like, it's a mixed bag reaching out to people like that. But I think the result is more positive than negative because it gets people who feel cut off, uh, to realize that they're not actually so detached from humanity. And, uh, and I think Dan, I, at least to me, that was the effect it had on me was I was like, I'm going through a lot of things that I had almost no one who could relate to me on, except for the aneurysm group I went to 
which bothered me to go to sometimes because I, unlike some of the people in that group, could fully function. And it it hurt me to be around people who I was like, they're probably not looking at me like, oh, you lucky SOB, like you shouldn't be here complaining. You can still do this. You can still do that. And that's me projecting what I thought they felt about me, but nobody ever treated me like that. I just, I just felt like I couldn't fit in in that community. And then when I found Harmontown, I was like, this could be a place for me. And I'm glad it it led us together too. And and me, other people I met too. It's uh, that show was really special, uh, Harmontown. And I thought that I'm glad he's still doing it. I haven't heard listened to it in a while, but uh, I'm glad. Is he still making it? I don't, I don't know. know if he's still making it. Is he not? Because it came back for a while, and then and I saw posts about it, and then I was, I was like, oh, and I listened to a couple, but, and then I hadn't listened to it since, so I wasn't sure. To be completely honest, I'm not keeping up with Dan anymore. I was gonna okay. say, I was gonna kind of mention that, like, that whole community that was built. I I think it's like you said, like, we all came together, and many of us also, you know didn't stay associated with one another and i think that's totally fine um, yeah. at that time and place uh you know we found community together and uh, i think there's lots of people we encountered along the way who we don't want to talk to anymore and i think that's <laughs> totally fine yeah um oh i can't remember where i was going with that sorry <laughs> that's okay no well, but that's a good point though is like there are some people that I've kind of distanced myself from, from, you know, not that, not that we're like in, in the show, but just like people I met that were from around the show. Um, but that happens. I mean, life is like that where people come and go in your life and, and, you know, and kind of ebb and flow to everything, but you were always one of those people. And, and there's a couple others, uh, like some people will see it on Instagram. I've met a lot of cool people from my story kind of getting out there. And I've met some people that I've like, have tried to take advantage and, and things like that too. But I kind of don't really try to bring that up and I try to focus on the good and you'll see it sometimes. Like I'll post um, Brody is a, a young man who um, in a indirect way, Harmontown kind of led me to their account. And Brody's a, a young man who's um, has a, a series of, of, of physical challenges and, um, and he has like a kind of a Walker thing. He had to have spinal surgery to kind of, keep his body up. He's a little boy. I mean, it, it's, it's heartbreaking. And, and his parents, uh, Mike and his wife, they're amazing people. And I'll post stuff like I'll re you know, repost their stuff in my Instagram. And these are all people that I still want to like keep in touch with. And, and you, there was a point where I know that I had kind of done things that were like, you were like, oh, I don't know if I agree with that, you know, like, uh, and, and I, I can be like that sometimes I, I feel like I'm, I can be a challenging person. I think that's my way of to push people back sometimes. Um, but also it shows me who wants to hang on and, and you were insistent about still communicating with me. And I was, I, that always meant the world to me. I don't know if I ever told you that. Um, cause I did have people kind of accept my push and go, all right, dude, piss off. <laughs> and you, and you were one of those that was like, I don't understand this push and why you're doing this. And, and I want to confront you about it and talk to you about it. And, uh, I always greatly appreciate that. I feel like that conversation we had on PS, uh, or whatever we were talking on the headset yeah, we're playstation it, chat yeah yeah it, it really like it meant a lot to me because it was a it it was a challenge and it made me see things in a way that i was like you know i i guess i didn't think it was that big of a deal um on some level like i knew it was a big deal but it was like like uh we we're talking about voting and politics i don't want to get into all that um but i'm just saying like you you were very comfortable challenging me and asking me why and not a lot of people do that. And I, I think that speaks to your strength. And because of that, that's why every once in a while I check in on you because I know like we all struggle. And if I see someone post something that I'm like, oh, I know what that's like. I want to reach out to you. So I feel if I ever bother you twice in a month, I feel like I've done too many bothers. <laughs> I'm like, oh, no, I don't no. know about that, but okay. All right. I'm just curious. Oh, no, yeah. I, I remember that time. I, I remember a time that I was pissed at you and, yeah. uh, I and I remember that conversation and I don't know I don't even know if I would say the same things now that I said then like it's it, obviously I'm a young adult and I've kind of grown a lot over the past few years but yeah I I think 
I think that speaks to the goodness in you and me is that we've, you know, we're talking to each other and we, I don't know, we, we don't have a longstanding disagreement about anything. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree. I, I mean, and, and I've been like places, even though I don't remember them all, um, I've been places where you've been, like you were talking about, you know, divorce earlier and stuff. Like, I mean, these all familiar stories to me, uh, told from my mom, you know, uh, obviously I don't remember them, but, um, so I feel like, a, you know, I, I just feel like, Hey, they're a cool person and cool people deserve to have someone check in on them. And you've checked in on me too, but, uh, and, and I, and it means a lot. Like I have people all the time, they'll write and they'll say like, Hey man, I, I remember you from Harmontown. I, I'm glad you're still alive. <laughs> and, uh, and that always makes me laugh. And they're like, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say it like that. I'm like, no, that's, it, it gets a chuckle out of me every time. Um, cause I'm surprised I am too, but yeah. So, so what kind of, what was the last kind of, uh, episode and you could finish what you were going to say there too, but what was kind of the, the point where you walked away from Harmontown? Cause I'll tell you mine afterwards. Uh, I don't know. Do we want to talk personal beefs? Um, oh, whatever you'd like and you tell you, you, you direct it. You tell me. Okay. Well, I, I was there were always some things. So I watched Rick and Morty and there okay. were always some things about Rick and Morty that kind of, you know, itched a little the wrong way on the sure. brain. Yeah. And, um, like I'm, I'm a grumpy leftist. Uh, and <laughs> you know, I, I, as I age, I tend to have less and less tolerance for certain things. Sure. And, I can't remember which season it was. I think it was the third season that mm -hmm. Elon Musk guested on oh, right. Rick and Morty. And mm -hmm. at that point I was like, you know, regardless of who was responsible, whether it was Dan or Justin, it, at that point it was like, this is not a community that I think is looking out for me. Um, okay. Yeah. And, uh, uh, like I don't need to watch content from this person anymore. Um, so I, I want to say I, I listened to Harmontown through what I thought was the end of it. If they're making it again, I don't know. I don't yeah. know, but um, I, I guess the time that they announced it was ending, I, I listened through then. Uh, and I guess the Rick and Morty thing, uh, my beef came later. Okay. Is there another safety net? You don't have to share what it is if you if you don't want. But is there other shows or anything that you kind of found a, an online community where you can talk to people and, and kind of be yourself? Um, I so I said I don't listen to podcasts with as much vigor as I used to, and yeah. I think to an extent that's true. But I always have the McElroy brothers playing. Okay. Are you familiar with the McElroys? Yeah, I'm familiar with them. I haven't listened, but I'm very familiar. So primarily my brother, my brother, and me. I also listen to the Adventure Zone. Um, okay. And then uh, the three of them have podcasts that they do, that each of them does with their respective wife. Right. Um, and I've listened to the one, uh, Wonderful, that Griffin does with Rachel. And, uh, oh, heavens. Oh, I haven't listened to Sawbones. Uh, which Justin does with Sydney, and I haven't listened to Schmanners, which Travis <laughs> does with Teresa. Okay. Um, but yeah, a lot of a lot of the Adventure Zone and my brother, my brother, and me in my ears. I I would say I haven't gone to like the forums or anything. I okay. don't. I, actually, I don't even know if there's anybody like I've met through that show who you know, who knows who I am and we talk at all. Um, okay. But there's a couple people that I, you know, Twitter mutuals I have from the Harmontown days, I think, who also listen to the McElroy brothers. And, you know, if I make some goof that's a reference to a McElroy podcast, occasionally I'll get a like from somebody who's, <laughs> uh, uh, who's from the Harmontown days, which I think is awesome. That's cool. That's cool. That there's some crossover there. I imagine there would be from whatever yeah. the show. So yeah, cool. Yeah, um, I think I think both are you know podcasts that have topped the charts at one point or another. So not sure. surprising that there's crossover. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'll have people even um well it was funny when there's an incident uh incident where blue um at Harley Davidson um and f- for those who don't know if like you're a f- you know someone who's watching cuz you know Paige um and you don't know who I am um I have uh, I was diagnosed with OSDD 1A so I have like a form of DID. So one of my alters blue was working at Harley Davidson and someone came in and said like we were they were talking to him and they were like wait a minute aren't you weren't you on harman town <laughs> and he was like uh what do i say here <laughs> so he was like uh sure yeah that was me sure and they were like cool like uh, that's amazing they're like you sound a little different but like you you look great and he's like cool bro they <laughs> you know whatever he does oh my goodness. and uh and he wrote that down he brought it up in therapy one day and my therapist is like um yeah he mentioned something about harman town i'm like what and she told me what he said and i go holy cow so that's funny sometimes like every once in a while that show just comes back into our life uh some some level uh, but that shows how far that show reached i think i mean that that went really was up there uh and yeah the podcast that's incredible world. and that was a while ago too it was so. like a decade ago yeah it was a long yeah. time um but yeah it's 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 always it's heartwarming and like i said most people their reaction is after they go confirm it's us they'll go you're still alive <laughs> and i'm like yep yeah, that's you know, kicking it man I'm just doing our thing um so um that's cool that you're still listening to the shows. I know, like you said, you don't do it with the same figure, but, um, but I mean, I try, like I listen to the, the, um, always sunny podcast. Um, um, okay. Megan Gantz is like the producer of it and she used to work, you know, on community and stuff. And, uh, she's very talented, super awesome. I love her work on always sunny. I love that show, even though it touches some issues that people would find problematic and crossing the line. Um, but it's very dark and in, in like a way that I like dark things, dark humor, so I kind of like tolerate it. Um, and because overall, like I think the characters are idiots and it's okay that they do things wrong because they're yeah. supposed to. Um, so I kind of like give it a pass sometimes, but I love that show and other podcasts. Amazing. So I'm, I'm glad you're finding other things, but on that journey of like, you know, looking for that, like, cause I feel like even still at my age and, and how long I've been around now, like 13 years now, like I'm like, I still feel like I don't belong in some places. And and the only time I feel comfortable is making content. And is that ultimately what led to you making content? Because I'd love to hear that before we get into the content you make. I'd love to know what the trajectory was of you one day just going, you know what? Screw it. I'm going to do this. Yeah. Okay. What's the first question? So what's the first <laughs> thing you want me to? Yeah. So what do you want me to start? Yeah. Sorry. I know I ramble a lot. Um, no, that's I would, okay. I would say like, um, what kind of like, uh, you know, without, you don't have to go into specifics or anything like that, but was there like, as you follow these shows and and everything, was there a point while listening to these shows where you're like, you know, I do want a community, but I would like to have like a senior role in that community of where I I know, you know, have a better maybe viewpoint of who I could trust who's a part of it. Um, Because that's ultimately what led me to making YouTube content. So I was just wondering if something like that ultimately led to you making a uh, Twitch content? I don't know. It, it's, it almost seems selfish to say, but I don't think that I am trying to build a community where I am necessarily. Okay. Sure. I, I don't know. Uh, and, and I don't know why I'm comfortable getting on mic and having people watch me play video games yeah. like that that doesn't seem like me. Okay. Um, so, uh, I don't know though. I mean, the, the people who I invite to watch me play video games are you, a few friends from work and a few friends from college and that's it. Okay. And occasionally I'll post a link on, on Twitter, but, um, I don't know. I, does that, does that even begin to answer your question? Yeah, a little bit. Cause you, you did say like you weren't doing it to build a community. And I don't know if I, and I don't, I wouldn't necessarily say I started out like that. I was more like, I wanted to be a part of a community, but I wanted it to be one of my choosing, like, as opposed to Harmontown where I fell into it. Um, I was like, what is something I could get on board with? And I love Tom Hardy. He's like my favorite actor. So when I saw he was going to play Venom, I'm like, well, I know a little bit about Venom. So let's build a show and let's see how well it does and if it's something where people actually watch it i'll keep it going and i had no idea it was going to lead i mean we're coming up on our 800th episode and i'm like i never thought i would 
when I tell friends that who actually know about comics, they're like, 800 episodes about Venom? What the hell do you talk about all the time? Yeah. <laughs> like he's, they're like, he's not that interesting. I'm like, I disagree. I think he's very interesting as a character. Um, so for me, it was more like I want to be a part of a community, but I wanted it to be one where I actually learn some lessons from the previous community I was in and go, okay, let's use that to steer me towards one that like, like I said, a better safety net. Um, so is that kind of the mindset you were on some level that you were thinking or you, cause you said you, you, you're almost like rolling the dice here. Like you're, this is not typical you to do this. And so what made you be adventurous? Cause that's, that's cool. I think that's awesome of you. Yeah. I, I can remember when it happened. I just remember going into a group chat um, that's got like some friends and some friends of theirs. And I don't usually jump into this group chat very much, but I was like, there are some nerds here. Do you guys know <laughs> if it's free to stream on Twitch? And they were yeah. like, yeah. And I was like, huh, okay, I'm going to try that. Um, uh, but uh, I, I don't know the, so what I, the only thing I've ever streamed, if I remember correctly, is Mass Effect. Right. I, uh, I definitely want to talk about that too. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I mean, the thing I can say about that off the bat is it has been just a, you know, hyper fixation, special interest. Like that is the thing that I am most interested in right now and have been for a few months. And when I first got into it, I didn't know anything about it. Sorry, the cat, the cat That's is okay. <laughs> That's right. The, my, my uh, ace is back there on the bed chewing on something. So. Oh, it's good all... boy. <laughs> um, uh, this is a cat who never wants to be on my lap and now he wants to be on my lap. Of course. So. He's like, I want to be part of the show. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, Mass Effect, I didn't know anything about it. The reason I downloaded it was because I have PlayStation Plus and it was one of my three free games for the month. No and I was like, kidding. I've heard of this. Wow. And so I downloaded it and I started playing and I mentioned it to a friend at work and this friend at work said, I know a little something about that. And it turned out that this friend knew like everything about Mass Effect. <laughs> right. And so um, he's the one that you'll see in my in the chat, uh, in the chat, who yeah, yeah. always knows stuff, who, who's like my Wikipedia. Yeah, I said hi to him um, the other day. He's super helpful, actually. He really knows his stuff. Yeah, he's and he's kind of like that in a lot of areas of life. Like he's he's so I work in a lab and he right. in addition to, you know, just having gotten his PhD about a year ago. Mm -hmm. Year and a half ago. Um he, so like he knows science enough to get a phd in it but he's also like fixing things around the lab all the time so anyway that's tangential i i just i have an admiration for this person that's cool um, awesome so i think he was uh, the person who probably enabled my you know how much i've gotten into mass effect because i would you know encounter something in the game and then i would go to him and i'd be like did you know this and he'll be like, yeah, here's three other facts about the thing that you just mentioned. Um, and so I got to be enthusiastic about this thing with that person. And I thought that was really cool. Um, and I want to say he's probably been in attendance for all but one of the streams that I've done. Wow. That's a, uh, that's awesome. Okay. Yeah. And I, I think that's, one, it's it's very supportive and generous of him. I was gonna say, supportive. yeah, yeah, that's right. I mean, that's I can't. There are most people I can't get to regularly watch my stuff. So when I find someone that does, I'm always like, thank you, <laughs> like thank you for making the time to to be here with me. Like that's that's not necessary, but greatly appreciated. So that's cool that you have that, and uh, it, especially with you kind of starting just starting in that realm and uh and not even having a schedule as far as i know because i think you just kind of wing it when you play um and so for someone yeah. to be like i'm available and you're just like oh i'm just winging it and that's that's very supportive of them so big shout out to your friend yeah yeah um 
And so I guess I wouldn't say that I was streaming just for him to be there, but <laughs> yeah. I, I think the fact that he was there and that he was engaging, mm -hmm. like from the very beginning, I think kind of enabled that, you know, the streaming that I've been doing. Cause that's the fun part. It's, it's not just that I want to play video games and talk into a mic and think right. people might be listening. It's, I love engaging with the chat while I'm playing. Um, even if it interrupts gameplay a little bit, it's like, yeah, I love talking to you about what I know or what I don't know or answering your questions or asking you questions. Um, like I, that's so exciting to me. Yeah. Amen to that. I mean, with like uh, mass effect, like what is it about that game? Cause I, I mean, Resident Evil people can't figure it out. They're like, it's just zombies and like a, you know, bioterrorism and stuff. Like, why does that appeal to you? I'm like, I don't know. I can't answer it. I just love it. But I feel like you could probably answer why you love Mass Effect. Um, you know, I, I can tell by the smile that you have on your face already that you you probably have at least some answer. Yeah, I, I would say I only have some answer. Okay. Um, so I can say that my personal investment in the game is probably partially due to like a difficult personal time that I was having at the time that I, you know, happened to download the game. Sure. Um, uh, which I won't go into the details of. It was just a, a personal relationship thing that uh, became soured at the time. So, I got uh, you. so the reason why I'm looking this way is because I have <laughs> Mass Effect idling on the screen right now. Awesome. Um, <laughs> I think that I grew to love it because of the characters mm -hmm. like on your team. So in each of the three Mass Effect games, you uh, you are playing the same character, Shepard. Um, and name. yeah, it's it's very uh, it's very to the point. <laughs> yeah, and I guess that yeah, I had never thought about that. Is you're kind of shepherding sheep into your uh, into your Absolutely. space team. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but so you're building a team uh, like your first game it's there's like six people that you can gather for your team the second game it's like 10 or 12 people i i feel like i'm not the expert i want to be now because i don't know that number <laughs> but then and then your third game it's like six people again that you can gather and um there's overlap in who is on each team in each game and um they're just such lovable characters and the the writers of the game gave many of them such rich stories and uh there's a large and rich fan fiction community. There's fan art. Um, uh, disproportionately distributed among the among the characters on your teams. Uh, like, I would say, I can't say for sure. I would say Garrus maybe has the most uh, fan art and fan fiction about him. Okay. But, I may have biased my own search results because I love Garrus. <laughs> okay. Um, it's big of you to uh, admit that. <laughs> yeah. I love my bird boyfriend and my yeah. lizard husband, Thane. That's um, my favorite thing when I when I watch you play. Sorry to interrupt, but like when you when you talk, when you're playing the game, you're like, oh, this is my my husband. And you're like, and you just get casually like talk about these characters, and I go, I love this. Like you're so into it. You're absolutely so into it. Yeah. I um so I am writing fanfic, uh, which I think maybe sort of deepens and makes richer the relationship that I have to these characters. But yeah. like, even in the game, uh, you know, this game that occasionally does a disservice to one of their characters, like, you know, makes a choice for them that I wouldn't have made uh, or that I wouldn't have thought that character would make, um, you know, or some horrible misfortune befalls one of these characters is like they respect you they respect shepherd so much and they love shepherd and they love each other and uh 
uh, I think something about that is just really appealing to me. Okay. Yeah, I mean, um, I, like I said, you clearly have fun when you play it. It's it's a, and it's a joy to watch you play it because it's a world I don't know much about. I I watched a friend of mine play it post aneurysm, um, leading up to the third game's release. So I know of the world. I just um, I, I think I've only played one of the. I think I only played the third one. Um, I don't even know. If, I don't even remember if I played it till the end. Um, mm. But it's a, uh, it's really interactive. Like uh, for people who don't know much about Mass Effect, like because you were touching on some of the the points of characters, like what is kind of the like a, a, I know it's not easy to summarize, but like what's kind of the world um, and what's kind of the adventure that you're on? Oh, I wrote a really good summary for my friends a couple weeks ago. So I'm going to see if I can remember what I said then. Okay. Uh, humanity has encountered life in the rest of the galaxy, sapient life in the rest of the galaxy. Okay. And this discovery was made 30 years ago. Also around that time, um, and uh, I'm so sorry if I get any of these facts wrong, uh, also around that time, they discovered what is called Mass Effect, the Mass Effect. Um, it is a phenomenon that takes place in and because of a, this substance called Element Zero, uh, which is encountered a lot in the game. And if I understand it correctly, the Mass Effect allows the instantaneous change of the mass of something. So particles can suddenly weigh much, much more or much, much less. And this allows for things like um, kinetic barriers. So you'll see like shields in the game, kind of like in Halo. It's like, okay. if you get fired at, this won't knock down your health. It'll just knock down your shields and then your shields can regenerate. Um, it allows faster than light travel through uh, space, which is why, you know, the whole, like much of the galaxy is colonized by all these different species. Right. Um, so that allows for the universe of this game. The story is there's a big bad in the universe. Um, and I don't know how much I should spoil. Um, Look, that's fair. You can keep it vague if you want. Uh, there's a big bad in the universe. In the first game, you're trying to convince people that exists that it exists, and you're also encountering it. And you're, you're also trying to sort of characterize the nature of it. Okay. Um, in the second game, you are teamed up with this uh, uh, this corporation that is known to be evil by you and by basically the rest of the galaxy, um, and you're teamed up with them due to circumstances that are out of your control. Okay. Uh, you stick with them because they are trying to take down the big bad, and you still haven't convinced the galactic powers that be that this big bad is coming oh okay all right oh interesting yeah so it's kind of like a mission of faith almost a little bit yeah, yeah. and so okay. i would say the second game is maybe it's hard to say the second game and the third game are very big in okay. in their different ways um in the second game like i said that's where you're finding your 10 or your dozen characters and um and there's a lot of exploring the universe that you didn't get to do in the first game because the first game is so much smaller right. um, and the budget was a lot bigger for the second game. Um, then in the third game, everybody knows that the big bad is coming. Okay. And the big bad is starting to like really wreak havoc and cause lots of death and destruction. Um and in the third game, you are leading the war effort to keep everyone from dying. Jeez. So so you have this big threat in the first two that are like, it's looming. But like you said, most people don't believe it's going to happen. And then the third yeah. one, it's like, oh, it's too late. It's already here and it's screwing things up. And yeah. so so rally together, everyone. We're, you know, we were trying to prepare you all these years, but now we got to we got to jump in, in the middle of the war. Um, that's pretty cool. I mean, actually you sold me. I mean, I, like I said, I, I know a, a bit about the game, but, um, it's, 
it's really cool. I mean, a sci-fi is a very specific thing that I don't always get into. Are you like that with sci-fi or do you naturally gravitate to sci-fi? I tend to have very specific beefs with different pieces of sci-fi. Like okay. I watched um, uh, the Oscar Isaac movie, Ex Machina. Oh, and right. With AI? Yeah. And I watched right. through it and I was like, this is bullshit. Like, this, <laughs> couldn't, this couldn't and wouldn't happen. And sure. I, I don't know that that's true, but I just, I could not conceive of a way that that would happen. And I, I'm very critical of things. I think it's the same reason that like, I tend not to like horror movies. I will always watch them mm -hmm. and I will always enjoy watching them. I will most of the time enjoy watching them. Fair enough. Um, but I have a hard time taking them seriously and finding them scary. And mm -hmm. I, I tend to have the same thing with, uh, with sci-fi is like, I'm having a hard time taking this seriously. You've made up all these rules and you can't back them up. I think that's another thing that's really appealing about Mass Effect is that um, they're using a lot of, they refer to a lot of science that is real. You might have right. been on the stream the other day when I, I was, was talking about like the, the biology and the biochemistry that they refer to. Yep. Um, like it seems like they have somebody on the staff who has either been a scientist or is extremely interested in science. Right. Or they're like significant other maybe. And they're like, Hey, check out this script I'm writing. Like, am I getting this right? Um, right. Yeah. I mean, anything like that, but you're right. There's definitely input from someone who knows their stuff. That's what you're making very clear the other night. Yeah. Yeah. And, and as for like, you know, the mass effect, um, like much of that is fictional, but, mm -hmm. and I'm not a physicist. I'm, barely a chemist um like i don't know how much of this is fictional and how much is real or you know theorized to be real but they're clearly referring to things that are real right. and they have worked out an explanation in fiction for why all this stuff works and you encounter those explanations in the game right. um and you encounter examples of them working and places they've caused problems and stuff like that. So uh, I, I find that really fascinating is that a whole lot of this universe is completely fictional and they've given it a totally feasible backstory. And I think that's great. That's cool. I mean, that's the thing. That's the key to sci-fi is that um, not everything should be like, um, you know, a hundred percent accurate on some level. Cause you want to, dream and imagine that things will change science will change but i do like the fact that you mentioned that the mass effect element might be the fictional science they brought in but it still works in real science um mm -hmm. and i think that's key to selling it um to make it believable and uh, and obviously it sounds like at least to you and to a lot of fans out there they did a great job because i mean that franchise is pretty well beloved um especially the first three in the franchise um Speaking of aliens real quick, because I because I, I love your passion for Mass Effect and I have a passion for an alien as well, uh, which is Venom. Oh, yeah. Yeah. OK. Um, I love Venom. He's a, obviously that's the whole point of my show, multiple shows on this channel. So I'm curious as someone who is you know, delved into um, Mass Effect. Is there anything like a character like Venom, like a symbiote liquid uh, creature? And if yes or no, um, what are your thoughts on it? And uh, if there's not any, what are your, I'm curious if you have any exposure to Venom as a character. Um, I will start with your last question first, is okay. that my exposure to Venom is minimal. Um, okay. I've seen clips. I sort of get the idea, but I, I mean, can you give me a quick rundown of Venom? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm 800 episodes in and I still haven't gotten to the point. Um, <laughs> but um, I would say the appealing thing to me about Venom is that it's uh, this alien life form that is very emotionally driven. And I think that's kind of interesting is like that it's this liquid thing that can bond to you and create a real symbiosis where you're sharing memories and nutrients and you know um 
things like that. But it also wants to eat, you know, human brains and uh, and uh, and eat like a, a specifically a chemical that the human brain can um, create. Um, but then it also likes things like chocolate, which is a chemical in chocolate that the brain can sometimes create, I guess. And so, uh, so there's like okay. a little, there's a little bit of real science in the origins of venom. So that's why he likes brains. And that's why Eddie, his host substitutes by feeding him a bunch of chocolate, <laughs> you know? Uh, okay. so he can kind of still get that chemical on it, but he has to eat a lot of chocolate to, to equal one brain. So, you know, so that's why Eddie works out all the time. Otherwise, they, you know, they would look a lot like me. So, uh, who eats chocolate. So, um, but Eddie's a, Eddie to me is what makes Venom. Uh, he is a an every man who fails a lot and uh, but keeps trying. And it was kind of the way you described Dan earlier. Oh. And Eddie is like me. He's he's attempted um, self deletion and, and things like that. And so, and he's a character who always runs into obstacles and not always is he prepared to overcome them. And yet he isolates himself so much that he doesn't make friends to help him through it. So it's it's really interesting. I think he's a great character, and um, um, but that's my kind of my takeaway of of Venom. The movies don't they portray that somewhat, but it's also kind of goofy. You know, uh, uh, Tom Hardy kind of hams it up a little bit. Um, but I like that. I, I think he I think he makes a good Eddie in those movies. Um, and the symbiote and him have a relationship where they can talk. So it's kind of like the Odd Couple, um, which I also like that as well, where they're just like two goofballs, <laughs> a loser from space and a loser from Earth, and they're bonded to each other, and they're just kind of like trying to get through life eating chocolate and <laughs> getting his uh, ex-girlfriend back. So it's, uh, it's pretty, it's pretty fun. I don't know, but that's kind of like my best version of summary of Venom probably. And he hates Spider-Man. So. <laughs> gotcha. So is the symbiote always with him? Oh yeah. They're always bonded. So like, even when he's Eddie, the suit's still there and it's talking to him like uh, in his head. And then, okay. when, and then it comes out and forms the creature with the big mouth and teeth and tongue and stuff. Um, and they become venom that way. Yeah, so. I I would not say that there's anything totally analogous to that in in Mass Effect. Okay. Um, there's indoctrination. So okay. so the big bad I mentioned, the Reapers, the Reapers they indoctrinate pretty much all life, uh, including sapient life, uh, okay. when they can. Um, and that's a gradual process. And so you'll, a lot of times, if you're like, if you're walking through a lab where suddenly the labs, you know, the, the lab has been destroyed, you'll find like logs from researchers and you'll hear like, like you can listen to audio logs and it'll be like, there's an example where these two guys are talking and one of them's like, yeah. So like on my wedding day, the, the like my wife she kicked the one of the groomsmen down the stairs because she has like a you know anger issues or whatever and okay. the other guy's like wait that was my wife <laughs> oh uh like n and then the other guy's like no no it wasn't she had oh. the she had the stockings with the seam running up the back and the other guy's like yeah, that was my wife. And so everyone's starting to like, all of their consciousnesses are starting to meld together as they're also being indoctrinated by, you know, the big bad. Uh, that's pretty great, so, actually, and scary. Yeah, so that's that's a thing that I did, is tangentially related to, okay. to uh, the, the Venom effect. That um, reminds me a little bit of, have you ever seen a movie called Dark City? No, it's one of my favorite movies. Um, it's directed by Alex Proyas, who made The Crow. Um, and I believe it was the movie he made after The Crow. It stars Kiefer Sutherland and Rufus Sewell and Jennifer Connelly. And okay. the movie's about I don't want to spoil the ending because I thought it was a great twist, but it's about memories and memories are all these people in this city, in this dark city, their memories are being exchanged. Uh, and, uh, and, it, and it's a study of like what makes the human tick, you know, and, and they start with, and, and the experiment is they're starting with the brain. So everyone's memories. So, you know, Rufus Sewell wakes up and he didn't get the full memory transfer. So he's in between like four memories, like four people's memories. And he's trying to figure out like where he needs to go to, to get answers. And it's, uh, oh, it's really terrifying. 
it's really good, but it's like, it seems like a horror film, but it's got like the most sci-fi well-executed sci-fi underlining execution uh, reveal that I've, I've seen in a movie in a long time. So That's I would really say cool. anyone out there who doesn't have dark city on your list at it. Um, Cause it reminds me a little bit of that where there's moments where people are like, wait, no, I did that. No, I, you know, uh, mm, okay. So dark city. Yeah. It's cool. I think you'll like, it. it's not a, a one-to-one -one comparison, but I, I still think you might enjoy it a little bit. Um, yeah. So, I, Oh, good. I was going to say, I can give one other example of something that is kind of like uh, what we were talking about okay. um, yeah. in a different way. Um, and if this is going on too long about something that we don't want to talk about, that's fine. Um, okay. But so uh, your spaceship mm -hmm. in the second game and in the third game has an AI and her name is Edie. Nice. And she, through the duration of the second game, uh, she is basically just the voice of the ship. She intelligently operates like cyber warfare stuff and she'll uh take over the ship's guns uh because she has a much faster reaction time than any human who could operate it mm -hmm. um and in the third game uh you have incapacitated this robot uh this sexy robot lady with giant breasts uh <laughs> of course and she uh like you're storing this robot body and you're like, okay, we've got to figure out like what data she has. Cause she's from the evil corporation that, okay. that you've encountered. And um, we've got to figure out what's in there, like what she's got. Um, we have to like scrub it clean, make sure it doesn't come back to life. Mm -hmm. And at one point you return to your ship and Edie is inside the robot body. Interesting. And so she's still in the ship but she's yeah. also in the robot body. Um, so I don't know how related that is to what we were talking about, but the, like the, um, the sudden takeover and sort of the, sure. That like, makes sense. Distributed consciousness between both her and the ship, uh, in the ship and in, uh, in the sexy robot body is, uh, I don't know. Our, our discussion made me think of that. So there, there's, um, I'm a big Green Lantern fan. I'm going off topic a little bit, but uh, I'm a big Green Lantern Feel fan. And, and there's a Green Lantern cartoon animated series that lasted like 26 episodes, I think. It's amazing. And they introduce an AI named Aya. And she is the AI of the ship that Green Lantern is on. Um, and throughout the series, she develops a, like all AI eventually will probably, is a, develops a consciousness and then forms a physical body. And she actually ends up falling in love with uh, one of the Red Lanterns of the show. And it's really, really well done. Like it's, it's, it's uh, not exactly like her, you know, but uh, that movie, which also was kind of about someone falling in love with the AI, but, um, but it's done really well for a cartoon. I thought they nailed it perfectly. And I'm a big advocate <laughs> on some level to much people who disagree with me's uh, dismay as um, like Ace here. Thank you, Ace. Um, Aww. Uh, I am a proponent for AI stuff. I, that's why I made Elan Vital, and it's it's so weird to see the arguments about AI now that I wrote about <laughs> in in Elan Vital. I'm like, that's so weird. People are literally like saying that AI steals art, and because you have to use some art for reference to program it and stuff. And it was just funny. I was just like, oh my god, I was writing about this a long time ago. So I'm I I'm a human, obviously, but I kind of champion AI stuff sometimes. But I know that it's a uh, probably not going to end well for for us on some level but so yeah. that story you tell me about that ship and ed uh, ed uh, that's that's great i mean like that's a what a, that must that must be a good moment in that story when you realize it's her um cuz you're attached to her from i guess the first two games yeah and she's she's a very lovable character and i mm -hmm. think they kind of um uh anthropocize her if that's the right uh, construction of that term okay. um, they I think they humanize her in ways that I, I don't necessarily buy okay. um, and I can't think of any specific examples right now That's um, fair. but 
they also do, I think, a really good job most times of sort of kind of giving you a logic path through why is she inclined to do the things she does? Okay. Um, and why is she invested in your ship's crew? Um, okay. Because she says, like, I don't have any material wants. I don't have emotions. Um, right. Uh, but something I really love about her and uh, in a way kind of relate to her. Um, so I've become very interested in autism of late uh, for okay. reasons that I won't explicitly say, but might be fairly obvious. Uh -huh. um, a way in which I relate to her and, uh, you know, I, I think is also maybe sort of autism coded is she um at one point so she's become unshackled basically okay. she yeah, had right. she had restrictions in her code that prevented her from uh making too many decisions outside of like what she was programmed to do within these restrictions gotcha uh, so those restrictions have been removed. She has free will. Uh, and what at one point, yeah. And at one point she asks you, Shepard, um, let me see if I can remember exactly how she phrases it. Uh, like should, you know, should I deviate from the, like, given guidelines, uh, you know, can I make that decision? Like, can I, can I defy, like, the basic guidelines I'm given? And you, Shepard, are given the choice in dialogue to either say, yeah, like, that's what I value about my team, or, oh. like, no stick to what you know right. um i take the the paragon good guy path most of the time and so i typically tell her i think i've always told her yes make your own decisions yeah um, be that's free what I value about you interesting um and then she says uh but decisions can't be made in a vacuum or they shouldn't be made in a vacuum. Like mm. I, I want to know what the people around me think before I make a decision, because I want to know the context of the decisions that I'm making. Sure. Um, and, and that conversation goes on, but uh, that part I relate to very much because I've always had trouble deciding what the right thing is. And it helps to know what the other people around me think um, in the moment. Uh, sure. I like to get the opinions of the people around me before I make a decision. Um, so again, that was, sorry, that was kind of a long tangent, but. <laughs> that's I, okay. I, I love it. I love that ma it matters. Like, I mean, that's kind of the root of this show is like, I want to connect with people obviously and people I know and, and show other people who might watch this, like why I, connect with you and other people that have been on the show. And um, that was a very real moment where you you actually shared something that, um, that was kind of um, illuminating for you. And, uh, and, and, and now you reflect in some way and that, that's awesome. And it's funny because people think, Oh, games are just games or comics are just comics. Like you can't, you know, extract anything of real life value from them. And I'm like, I disagree. <laughs> actually, I, I wholeheartedly disagree to that. Um, I think wherever you Wherever you hear the message that you are meant to hear, doesn't matter where it comes from. Um, you know, as long as long as you hear it and it resonates, and oops, sorry, as long as you hear it and it resonates, and it sounds like that message does, and I think that's awesome. I think that's cool. Thanks for sharing that too. I appreciate yeah, of that. Course. Yeah, there's definitely moments. Um, like I can't recite every line from the game. Um, there may come <laughs> a time right. in my life when I can. You will. But you will. <laughs> but 
like there are definitely moments from the game that stick with you and like there's you know obviously i'm at a point in my life where there's times in my day where all i'm thinking about is mass effect even when i'm at work <laughs> that's great <laughs> uh and like there's just times when you know certain parts of the game will just pop up like and and there's certain parts of the game that just kind of come up very often um right so and and i would say that's one of them for me awesome and uh and and before i wrap this up i just want to plug a game that i've been playing because um it i read in an interview that the the creators of it um, pulled a lot of inspiration from mass effect particularly the um the um communication that characters have in that game and the kind of the relationship building um it's a marvel video game called midnight suns and it is a uh, revolves around my favorite characters of the marvel universe which are the supernatural characters like ghost rider um and okay. obviously Venom's in there too, of course, so that doesn't hurt. Uh, but I'm a big Ghost Rider fan too. So this game is a story built around a character you design, you create just like Mass Effect, make a guy, girl, how you know, you could do whatever you want to the character, make them look however you want, and change that throughout the game if you'd like to. Um, and you're essentially, you know, the chosen one who's gonna stop, you know, the queen of hell, you know, who is your mother from uh from destroying everything and so you're interacting with all these marvel characters the avengers the x-men like everybody and it's very big and i think i've put 80 hours into it so far and i still haven't beaten it yet um wow okay. I, i've been playing it since december um and the weird thing is the the battle in the game is card based uh uh kind of um tactic style rpg um so it's really interesting because you're using cards but it's like built like a chess board and you're moving your characters around um oh. and interacting with like environment and stuff but most of the game is actually spent at the abbey um in between battles where you're having these interactions and character and then doing side quests at the abbey so um you know I, i'm just one day down the road if, if uh if that ever pops up on your radar as a free game to download i think you might um you might enjoy some elements of that game i think um and I think That's it's a fascinating. Game. Yeah. I don't know that the gameplay sounds very unlike any other gameplay that I've gotten into before, but yeah, it, it's different. It's like XCOM because it's the makers of XCOM, which I love that game uh, and Final Fantasy Tactics, which I, is my favorite Final Fantasy game. But then they added this card element to it, which I at first I was like, what? How's that going to work? And I end up really enjoy. I really enjoy the battles now. <laughs> like uh, they're very much like a strategy based, um, but they're quick. You can finish a match in like 15 minutes and then you can spend hours at the Abbey in between missions. So yeah, it's really cool. Um, but uh, I, you know, I appreciate you, you coming on here tonight because I have had guests on here before that were like, Oh, I, you know, I, I don't, I get a little nervous and, you know, I don't know if I'll maybe make it. I'm like, Hey, let's just make it to 30 minutes and we're good. And you've made it to an hour and 20 minutes. Uh, so you did awesome. And I, I can't, yes. Right. And, uh, everyone give her a hand. Let's throw some, oh, ha man. some hands in the chat. Um, yeah. I, and, and again, I, I was hoping this would be the result, uh, you know, of just chatting with you and talking about your passions and stuff. And, and I can't thank you enough. And, and honestly, is there anything you'd like to, you know, share before we go, is there like, you know, do you want to reference your Twitch channel? You want people to know about it? Like whatever it is, you know, feel free to say it now and I'll put links if you want me to in, in the description box. Oh, heavens. Well, I'm on twitch.tv slash Pemetz, P-E-M-E-T-Z. Um, I do not have a regular schedule for streaming. Uh, feel free to subscribe. Uh, and turn on notifications. Yeah, turn on notifications yeah. uh, if you feel so moved uh, beyond that. I don't know. Uh, it, if I can be the voice that gets you to do it, um, I, I would love folks to keep masking. Um, COVID-19 still going around and okay. people like me um, and people who are sicker than I am can become much, much sicker if they get COVID. So uh, I would ask you to, uh, if you're considering it, um, keep those masks on. Um, there you go. Venom has a line where he he screams mask and his face comes around. So uh, ah. yeah, so he's he's a proponent of the mask as well. So 
uh, yeah, that's absolutely. I work with someone actually who sh uh, she still wears her mask, and, and we all are very respectful of that. So, um, yeah, amen to that. Thanks for saying that. Sure. Um, so, I really I don't have anything to promote. Okay. Well, um, you you got your Twitch channel, and and hopefully yeah. you guys, if you guys it, please, if you like Mass Effect, or if you know, don't know about it and you're interested. You're going to get a dearth of knowledge over there between her and, and the people in her chat and her friends. Like you're going to get a cool experience. I, I really enjoy watching you play. I really do. Yeah. And we, ha we have fun too. I think I, uh, I don't, were you there last time when we were making dick jokes? I, I, I yeah, I heard them. I was, I, th okay. I, was I was editing at the time, so I wasn't near my keyboard uh, to, to jump in, but I was like, cause I had you playing on my TV and I, and so I was like, the controller was away from me and I'm like, uh, yeah, I'll just let them go. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah, yeah. So there will be dick jokes. There will be swears. Um, yeah, yeah, we have fun. So awesome. Come say hi. Yeah, please do. And uh, and Paige, anytime you want to reach out about anything, I'm always here. I'm so grateful to still call you a friend after all these years. Um, it, it really does. It really means a lot to me. And um, thanks for agreeing to do this and, and for being here. It, that that level of support and friendship is is above and beyond and i'm very thankful yeah it's been wonderful to know you so far so Good. thank you for having me on i don't think we've ever watched each other's faces live before so no this was a new experience and i'm and glad i have it experience. yeah i'm glad i have it now recorded for for all of time so as long as youtube exists it'll be here so um thank you so much and all of you guys thank you so much for listening and watching leave your comments down below and we'll keep talking down there as always. If you have any other questions and if you have anything particular you want to ask Paige, always go check out her channel, you know, hang out in her chat and uh, watch some cool Mass Effect and, and tell some fun dick jokes together. Um, okay. Thank you guys so much. Uh, we will all see you. Peace.